Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. This one is actually the 100th show. I can't believe it's been 100 shows. 100. So to celebrate, as well as our regular news, we're going to be looking back at some of the favourites of the things that you've sent in. I've got loads of favourites. Okay, so straight into news, and first up is actually, I think you, you brought attention as well to us. Oh, yes, yeah. no, big uh, fan. They yeah. make our aftermarket electronic operators for uh, DI2 and SRAM and stuff. Um, but I haven't actually seen one in operation. There's this video that I spotted this morning, and it looks amazing. Look how tiny, uh, what would you call it, actuation ring? Like, it's the, it's the smallest little device, touch point, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Uh, it looks mega. Super fast. I just don't think there's any setup that wouldn't benefit from the clean lines that this could bring. Oh, for sure. Coming yeah. with the handlebar, and I think it's it's really cool to see somebody kind of go from, you know, branching out like that instead of the other way around. Sometimes component manufacturers try kind of you know the electronic stuff. But yeah. Back to front sort of thing. I just think it's great. I I really like. It. I'd love to actually see how that feels on a mm. bike. Um, the cool thing I think is the fact they do their own handlebars. So uh, I think the one in the image is like a 750 or something. But they say you can trim them down or run them down to 690. So full XC start there. And they've got the cable channels on them like we've already seen previously on some bars compatible or designed for DI2 stuff. Mm. So similar option. They've got cable ports so you can nice and oh, just. Really nice I think it looks kit. great. Yeah, definitely keen to have a little, a little go on one of those, I think. Yeah, big time. So, there's a big conversation going on. One of the many conversations, but it seems to have come back again. Coil or air. Ah, oh, classic, yeah. Yeah, now, I'm somebody that I tend to kind of set and forget my suspension. So, a yeah. coil shock doesn't necessarily affect me in any negative way. But yeah. I know you've mentioned it before, where from carrying camera gear to not, your riding weight can be quite different. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I. Core shocks, no doubt, the way they track the ground, like second to none, they just mm, work they fantastically. Do, yeah. But um, but I do, especially now that air shocks are so good, I don't really use a coil shock anymore. And I haven't done for some time, and the argument's been I constantly change my riding weight. Yeah. Not as in physically what I ate for breakfast, but um, you know, I might, <laughs> might have a camera Big bag. Sunday lunch. Yeah, some of that stuff's quite heavy. You know, sometimes <laughs> I might have a 20 pound pack on, yeah, and other times there'll be nothing. I just, I can't be asked to basically change the settings. Mm -hmm. um, whereas an air shock, obviously, is infinitely adjustable, which is yeah. why I think the market has largely gone that way, because it's for, for ease and simplicity. Yeah, selling off the shop floor, especially. Yeah. So, spin, sprin, sprin decks. Sprindex has brought out a really cool system, an adjustable coil spring rate. Yeah, so that is a smart idea. Super, super cool. So what it is, is you buy the package, you buy this kind of plastic adjuster, yep. as well as the coil. Yes, yeah, part you, of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you can dial it up incrementally. So it has an adjustment range, of, I think about 60 pounds. And yeah. That's, and that could be enough, really. That, for... Yeah, I think it would be. And um, I think it looks really cool. I don't know necessarily the, the mass market, I don't know about any people that perhaps are still riding coil, but mainly maybe it'll interest some people. I think definitely, like sort of more aggressive trail riders and enduro racers and riders will start to like this sort yeah. of thing. Um, I can only see benefits, to be honest. Yeah, my only small worry, and this is you know, I mean, getting the comments because I'm sure some people probably know more about this than me. Yeah. But a, a spring is often cut and it's kind of box ended. Yeah. Do you see what I mean? So that they're bent and it's flattened. So with this system, it's putting stress along. Do you see what I mean? Because basically it's, I suppose, isolating or taking a section of the spring out of the picture to yeah. increase the spring rate. Yeah, so um, basically what Henry's saying, if, in case you hadn't wondered how a spring gets harder, the smaller the spring is effective, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, I guess it depends on how it's wound and how thick the material is, but the less of the spring is, the harder it is to compress it. So yeah. it kind of eliminates you compressing a bit. That's kind of yeah, right, isn't it? totally. And this isn't to be confused with preload either. So people might think, why not just crank yeah. up that dial? That's but such a misunderstood different. thing. Yeah. Yeah, so the preload is literally the load that's put on the spring before it works. Uh, it doesn't change that spring rate. It just essentially stops it moving to a certain force before it gets going. Yeah, so and, and you don't want much on a core shock because no. you're just going to choke it up a bit, really. Yeah, totally. So. Um, I think it's really cool. There's options across the board for pretty much all the suspension manufacturers. And yeah, 140 bucks, including spring. I think it's pretty cool. Well, I've got to say, the video that sold me was this one on screen, just, just looking at him dialing it in. Uh, dialing, dialing in the spring rate and seeing the little window indicator there. Yeah. Oh, that, that is super cool. Yeah. I think really, you can really literally cool. just click, click, click. And you can actually use that as another feature, I reckon, as well. Mm. Um, dead keen. Uh, actually got sent a message about these by Richie Schley, who's actually uh, no seems, seems to be working with them. Oh, yeah. wow, that's uh, pretty cool. pretty cool. So, uh, hey, Richie, if you've seen this, um, get some over here quick sharp, hey? 
Next up in news actually is um, it's, it's just a calendar really, but it's from Bike Ninja who sent us a bunch of their rewind sort of retro focus stuff before. Uh, and this is a little look at their latest calendar for next year. Um, I'm a big lover of the rewind stuff. I know that some of you guys uh, love sending stuff in, so uh, it's worth having a look at this calendar. And it's also I'm quite proud of the picture on the cover. It's my picture. I think it's pretty cool. I mean, originally, Doddy, I'm not going to lie, when you said you were having a calendar shot, I thought it was some kind of charity gig. I thought, good on him. But no! You thought I'd become different. like a Pirelli girl yeah. or something. <laughs> I did indeed. I was like, man, well, man of many talents. He, he, he knows what he's doing. But no, it's super cool. I just think it's great to, uh, to get that kind of... I quite like just, it's a retro, it's an old calendar. Yeah. Put it on the wall and tick boxes off and yeah. don't forget your grand's birthday and stuff. Yeah. We, live, we live too much on our phones and laptops and that. I certainly do. Anyway, so having something up on the workshop wall is quite beneficial. Yeah, no, I, think, I think all the photos look yeah. great and um, especially the certain Mr. Cover shot. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, well, there you go. Check out Bike Ninja, loads of cool old retro stuff. So, last item in the news this week is the new BH Ultimate Evo. So we've seen in the last maybe 12 months specialised with their new kind of cross-country hardtails coming down incredibly low weight. Mm. This puts it in a similar ballpark. A medium frame of the BH comes in at 840 grams. 840? Which is ridiculous. That's lighter That's than one of my tyres. Absolutely tires. ridiculous. Yeah, totally. It's lighter than a tyre. That is insane. I just think, wow. from, you know, like a trail bike frame, obviously with a suspension shock, yada, yeah. yada, yada. But sometimes they're what? Three, three and a half kilos? Yeah, Happily. something like that. Yeah. yeah. 840 grams. It is remarkable. I've had sandwiches heavier than that on a regular basis, in fact. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, developed for the, on, on the World Cup circuit, and it's got a few interesting little fe features. It's got the, um, the flat mount brake caliper. Now, what's that all about? That's, I've, so, I've seen that on back of Neil's Lux before, but mm. I tend to see them on road bikes and stuff, the flat mount. It does, and I wonder, I wonder how long this particular standard, I'm saying it carefully, yeah. is going to be around because... That's the new standard. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. Gotcha. I just feel there seems to be... I mean, if you buy the whole bike and you don't have any problems, it's probably not really going to affect you. But I do feel there seems to be a bit of resistance to this one in particular. Some standards come in and no one really bats an eyelid. Yeah, sure. Other ones... Some for quite logical, I guess, that's yeah. why. Um, I mean, it would mean... I don't know, I think it would probably mean finding a brake caliper quite difficult. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, some companies only offer that uh, flat mount in their road bike calipers. Yeah, you know, so yeah, for sure. It really does kind of put a cam. So it might limit you as a consumer for aftermarket. Really. Yeah, totally. I, I did a bit of googling and I saw some people saying, "Oh, you know, put a Dura Race caliper on the rear," which sounds kind of quite cool and quite trick. And there is that super lightweight road stuff we can fit to our mountain bikes now. But it's nice to have options, isn't it? Well, it is. Um, but then also, that's correct me if I'm wrong. That's a pretty specialist frame. Well, in that little, that someone's going to, going to potentially be pretty meticulous in how they spec it. So, um, well, 840 grams for frame. Yeah, outrageous. But yeah, it's, that's crazy. It's got a beautiful shape to it, and it also uses a. They call it the block lock, which is similar to Trex knock block. Knock block. <laughs> that's a confusing word. <laughs> Um, <laughs> which, like, is, which is a great idea to have that on a frame yeah. that you need to protect. Yes, I guess kind of like uh, Canyon have got a similar thing as well Canyon with their top cap that thing. Uh, hits the top tube and stops your fork or your brake levers or whatever else damaging yeah. it. Especially with your cross-country bikes. Yeah. So the benefit is, is that if you crash, it doesn't hit into it. Yeah. So this, well, the benefit's twofold. One, it means you don't have to um, form the, d uh, the down tube in such a way that it avoids uh, the fork crowns. Fork yeah. fork crowns. And also it means that if you're running a really negative, low front end, you're not going to smash it. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that is really important, especially on a frame that's that light, because let's face it, you crash a frame like that, it might not be damaged to the, the actual crash, but your handlebars, your forks and that could definitely yeah. do a bit of a bad mischief, I guess. I read a couple of years ago that Colnago were making all these beautiful road bikes, and they're like a real boutique brand. Mm. And the road bikes were fantastic to ride. They you know, passed every stress test they were concerned about. Yeah. But the problem was people were sitting on them whilst waiting at coffee shops and breaking them. Really? Yeah. No so way. So that sort of, that's the kind of tolerance because it's just not meant for impact. All right, now it's time for Bike Cave. Uh, that's where you keep your bikes. Uh, that's where you lock them up. That's where you work on them. You do all the cool stuff with your bikes. And we've had some awesome submissions for new lot over the last 100 shows. I can't believe I'm saying that, actually. Um, so we just wanted to share some of the ones we've really enjoyed looking at. Uh, there's all sorts in here. Uh, we're not going to go through every detail because you guys have already been on the show. But please, if you haven't been on, please take some shots and send them in to us because we absolutely love them. 
First up, I want to talk about is Sona's Bike Cave. So this essentially is a spare room just put to much better use than having a bed in it. It's just <laughs> yeah. completely loaded with stuff. Um, we've seen your bike Sona also sent in for, I think, maybe top mods. Yeah, for the, um, for the forks. Yeah, kind of matched yeah that's right. Recognise it. Uh, I love it. You've got that old school Klein mantra up there. I never saw one in that colour, so I don't know if you've done a custom job on that. But it's just just so much stuff going on in here. It's really cool. A little ET print. I think that deserves a bit better home, to be honest. That should be on the wall. <laughs> I really quite like that. But uh, yeah, no, it looks, it looks rad, doesn't it? So uh, yeah, this was sent in by Paul, who's a friend of yours uh, from Detroit. So I would guess you're probably uh, based over that way as well. Uh, so you've got a Santa Cruz high tower. You've had a specialized Stumpy in the past. You've got various medals hanging up everywhere, in fact. Just loads going on, I love it. It's awesome, that's a, kind of the epitome of a bike cave, really. It's just everything just chucked in, and it's your, it's your little place where you keep everything and work, and work on your bikes. Yeah, super cool. We've got another submission, which I really liked, from Sam from Pennsylvania in the US of A. And I mean, I don't know if it's like a recording studio, a bar, or what, but it's absolutely incredible. It's got such a good workshop. It just seems to have like, I don't know, such just like a fun, cool vibe. You look at it and you think, yeah, I could, I could spend some time down there. That <laughs> looks all right by me. Joy, it, it looks almost, in a couple of shots, almost looking like a flat, doesn't it? It's just yeah. got some bikes in <laughs> it, it rather than like a bike cave. It does. It's also, interestingly enough, got a urinal, which I think... Oh, so I could live in there, then? You could live in there. Yeah. Not Maybe not in the urinal itself. <laughs> so I guess you, you can keep your basic food in some food in a beer fridge, then, <laughs> yeah, I guess. Yeah, totally. I think it looks great. And, um, yeah, he's got so much stuff in there. Motorbikes, his bikes hanging up, a really decent workshop setup. And um, yeah, I just think, like I said, it just looks like the kind of place you think, I want to go hang out there. Oh man, I remember this. Yeah, so you've got the, the Kona process, of course, but now I remember seeing it from this angle, you've got that crazy old school Schwinn. Oh yeah. The unified design. Yeah. Actually, it's a really nice option over there. It's got a lot of IRC tires on there with that red sort of sidewall on them. Man, it's cool, I love it. It's great. Awesome. Next up, and this is, this is a personal favourite. This is from Gareth in Buckinghamshire. Um, Gareth, you must be a GMBN super fan because you've got all the GMBN gear at the back of your workshop here. Everything's colour coordinated. It's so neat and tidy the way, you know, you've got your bikes hanging up on the one side and you've got your TV and stuff on the other side with, with Bike Cave on the wall and Mint Sauce drawn on there as well, which is uh, the classic mountain biking sheep um, from MBUK magazine. And I also love that you've, you've copied our logo and turned it into Gareth's bike cave. <laughs> so, like, mate, that is awesome. That is so cool. Again, probably in the spirit of things. And is that a last orders bell as well? I think so. There seems to be a bit of a theme here. I think <laughs> stuff going on. Yeah. Uh, but pleasingly, uh, nice, uh, you know, your tools are nice and neat. Everything's stored away properly, as it should be. Looks like you've got quite a hand chosen selection in there. But yeah. No, it looks awesome. fantastic, eh? We also have one from Lee from Nelson Bay in Australia. And his one's a bit different. It's kind of, you know, it can be taken on the road, but my God, it's cool. Possibly the ultimate bike transport. That's the coolest mobile option I think we've seen. So cool. Yeah. It's got proper toolage drawers in there. It's got a leading solar panel. No way, I can't, I don't remember having a solar panel. <laughs> Man, I mean, everyone says such great pictures in. This is awesome. It's crazy, yeah, just awesome stuff. Okay, so another one here from uh, Ica or Ica in uh, Mexico. Now this one is just, Insane. This is like some sort of garden studio, but uh, something off Grand Designs. Look at that with the back end of the bike hanging off the wall, so you clearly know what this place is all about. You've got the whole enchilada trail on the wall, which I've said before is my favourite all time trail. Uh, I guess you probably love it as well. And then the inside, it's more like a museum. Like, insane in there. Look at the amount of space you've got. <laughs> so oh, it's cool. got, you've got Blake's old Marin hanging up there. It looks like the kind of place you'd go to contemplate. Yeah. Oh, what am I going to think about? Upcycling, hanging down there. Perfect. The lights. And then, yeah, uh, there's a the business there. Yeah, yeah nicely spec'd. In fact, I, I totally remember this, because like, your workshop end of it looks better than most people's kitchens. <laughs> bonkers, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? You Absolutely got... bonkers. Looks fantastic. Yeah. Oh, man, it's such, such a great selection. I really, really love the bike cave thing, so please continue to send yours in, uh, because they're awesome, and you're awesome. Next up is Top Mods, and we have a real good selection of some of the greatest of all time. So Top Mods, obviously, we 
Love it when you send stuff in. So, you know, please kind of continue in good form, all the amazing submissions, or maybe this stuff is just good inspiration for you. So show us some of the smaller jobs you've done as well. First up, we have a submission from Nick from, and I actually learned this on the show, it's not Arkansas, it's actually Arkansas. 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 Yeah. Every day is a school day. Yeah. Blew my mind. But anyhow. Hey, no, that's a good attitude. Every day is a school day. <laughs> it, no, it, t- it totally is. I get corrected and stuff all the time. I don't mind it. It's like, yeah, if it you is. knew everything, life would be rubbish, wouldn't it? Well, I'm from a place called Ulster, which is written Ulcester okay. in Worcestershire, which is actually written Worcestershire. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I've, <laughs> I've heard people say Worcestershire. I've oh, also yeah. heard people say Leicester oh. as well. <laughs> Leicester. It doesn't exist. Oddly <laughs> violating. <laughs> <laughs> so, first up we have well, this awesome Heineken. Uh, oh, it's a great use of it. Just looks great. So, that's, is that a bit of a keg? Because it's a bit bigger than I think a it can, must maybe. Be, yeah. yeah. I think it must be. But um, I know, it's like a good use, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I like it. Fantastic. I don't know why I haven't thought of something like that. I've done the old cut up bottles before, but not a, a beer related product. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have an amazing submission from Igor in Willowbury. And he says, well, he shows us this amazing 3D printed volume spacer, which is just fantastic. I mean, especially if you're getting between, you know, you can go between half sizes there. Yeah. Just brilliant. So I, I remember how this came about because I had, uh, I think it was a Scout uh, 290 and I had the base model and it had a cheap recon fork on it, but it wasn't compatible with air spa- uh, volume oh, spacers. Okay, yeah. And not like, in, in the old days, you could just put some oil inside your air leg. You can't do that now, the way negative springs work, because yeah. you used to have coil negative springs. Uh, so I was like, ah, you know, would have, could have done with having a custom-made one. Well, I did have a mate that was actually going to do it for me, but um, but but Finn didn't help me uh, this one time. Um, <laughs> but you did, and you made these yourself, which I love. And it looks awesome. Yeah. How cool is that? Brilliant. Custom-made to fit that top cap that doesn't wasn't supposed to accept one. So I guess that works. Awesome. I remember this next one, this was from Carlos, it was a giant anthem, so Carlos was from Mexico and uh, from what I read, reading between the lines, basically got bored of the bike basically and wanted to do the shim stack himself, so he stripped the whole whole thing down, which I'm sure he'll appreciate, he's got all the correct tools there. Oh yeah, nice stack lamps. Yeah, there we go, there's some proper modding. (laughs) So nice, so he modded the shim stack to give it basically a bit more support in a medium switch mode basically. Oh wow. Which is great, uh, it's on the XE bike so I can see exactly why you do that to make it stand up a bit more. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like you must be an aggressive rider then, which I think is cool. And great pictures too. Mm, really nice pictures. That step cast is one hell of a 4K. Oh yeah. Fantastic. And I think this last one was, um, well, it's it definitely one of my favourites. I know you were yeah. blown away when this one came in. I you, just think. You want to do this one? Yeah, it's brilliant, you know. Talking about being ahead of the curve. Yeah. We're talking about, you know, everyone's always talking about gearboxes. And everyone says, oh, I'd love one, but some people, well, I haven't even put my money where my mouth is enough to buy one. You and over here has gone the full whole nine yards and changed his bike to a gearbox bike. Yeah. And, and that's not a cheap bike anyway. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, it's just... And it's a pretty unique bike, to be fair. Yeah. So doing a proper I'm cut in. and shut like that on a bike like that, not only is it brilliant, it's, yeah. it's brave as hell. And also just all the the kind of aesthetic modifications, you know, just touching up the frame and it looks, well, I just think it looks great. And it's kind of those Empire bikes were so distinctive. Oh yeah. And it's an even more distinctive, distinctive bike. Yeah. I just think it's great. Yeah. I love like the ambition and the, you know, I'm just gonna I do it. I love that on the top tube as I forgot, number one of one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I tell you what, like, I mean, that's, that's quite a level above what most people's are like. We, we always say anything's welcome here, like change your handlebar grips. That is an amazing mod, but that, that's next level. Next, that really yeah. is. That's Production probably the quality. greatest mod on a tech level of all time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, super cool, mate. It's absolutely brilliant. Super cool, but don't let that one put you off if that's not to your level, because not many people are. Um, <laughs> we say, have a my level. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, I could do any of that stuff. <laughs> but I think it's absolutely awesome, mate. But. Uh, Keep those top mods coming in, whatever they are, as long as you're changing your bike to make it a bit better, it counts. Okay, speaking of old stuff, here comes the rewind section. So uh, yeah, everyone knows we love the retro stuff. So uh, um, you guys clearly love it as well because you send us some wicked stuff. So I'm gonna just buzz through some of the cooler bits we've seen. Impossible to feature you all in one show. Um, But if you've got anything retro, send it in. Here's the link right here. First up on your screen was this old Muddy Fox Explorer from Rob in San Francisco. And he got this for 40 bucks on Craigslist. 
Um, did it up, doesn't ride it that much. The condition of it's insane. 40 bucks? Yeah. Holy smokes. But it's funny, you know, we've been talking about geometry recently. Look at that long chain stem in the back, that slack head angle on the front, <laughs> yeah. that short stem and those big bars. Yeah. What went wrong with mountain biking in the middle? Wow. We need to find out. We need to get to the bottom of that. <laughs> yeah. But it is cool. Like, it's old and yeah, all right, it's not going to be good compared to the today's standards because of the tech we have these days. But it's something quite cool that that's about as mountain bike shaped as, well, as you could get, really. Yeah. Um, for back then, classic mushroom grips. It's good work. That's see, I, I want a retro bike and I quite like something that just that that sort of simple bike. Something about it is still nice, I think. Yeah. Proper clunker style. Yeah. You see that new clunker was brought out this week. I think we are the people. Yeah, people. you're saying about that. Yeah, but it's actually kind of cool, but a bit nice. It's a bit too nice. Yeah. But Forty bucks for that, banging. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, next up, so I hadn't actually seen the Rockshox brakes in the flesh. I know that Neil used to have some. I'd only seen them by Amplifier, um, as in the Amplifier bikes. So it's quite cool to see these. So uh, the Amp Research, RockShox calipers, hydraulic calipers, you used them with a cable to actuate them. Um, apparently they weren't all that good and uh, they might have leaked here and there, but there's something quite cool about them still. Yeah. Um, pretty rare to see them. So the Amp ones I think were all red. So the RockShox ones, dare I say, looked a bit cooler. But that's pretty cool. And then this, the first Hope Brakes, or at least one of the very early ones. I had a friend who had one of these and actually clamped on his Pace Forks. In fact, a set of these, and it, it actually ran on the front. And you could, this sort of adapter, you can see it sits on the hub. Oh, oh right, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No way. It basically <laughs> clamped on the front of the fork leg. Um, yeah, and look at the size of the disc right there. Nothing weighed oh, quite a lot, but, yeah, I but I rem always remember trying it and thinking like, it was just weird because your back brake feels terrible because mm. your front brake actually had so much power on it. Oh, of course, uh, yeah. And the back one was just a conventional brake. In fact, it would have been a cantilever, not even a V-brake wow. back then as well. The original mullet. Yeah, the original mullet. There we go. Been used a lot these days, isn't it, the mullet? Right. I don't know if you remember these, but this is the uh, Bullet Brothers chain tensioner. That pretty much is um, the retro clutch. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that would literally bolt onto the back of your rear derailleur and you had two spring options, the cross-country one or the downhill one. The downhill one, basically, you had to like get, do thumb strengthening to change gears. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> but it did make your bike silent wow. and wore out your derailleur. Ooh, please. That was like a good deal. <laughs> but they were kind of cool because you'd see one and be like, he's got a bullet brother chain guard. He's yeah. cool. Like, <laughs> Nothing like a quiet that. bike, eh? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's funny, he's still chasing that now. Trying to get the most quiet bikes. Yeah. Um, classic GT RTS, the rocker tune suspension, high pivot up here, um, and then had a crazy linkage piercing the seat tube without no lean shock. But just a really nice example of it. Mm. All the original stuff: the Snowflake front wheel, Hope Tie Glide Hub, Mag 21s, Diacomp 987 brakes, Tioga Wonder Dogs, and then of course, how could we not have a GT Lobo in there? There's not many of these left in rideable conditions and your one looks pretty amazing. Pretty nice. I don't know what the forks are on that. I think they might be White Brothers. They did the UD150 and the UD180. It's just, I don't know where this stuff comes from. It's just in here somewhere. There's not, there's not much else in there. It's just like a retro catalog of bike <laughs> stuff. But, um, but it's kind of cool. I still think it looks good now, that oh, bike. Oh, yeah. It actually looks better without the graphics on than it did. Sorry, GT. It looks, it looks really cool like this. Well, red springs and carbon lugged frames. Yeah. You know, it sounds a bit familiar if you ask me. Yeah. You know, they're back in fashion, baby. Absolutely. <laughs> Goes around, comes around, doesn't right. it? But, um, but no, seriously, guys, keep this stuff coming in. It's awesome. You keep us buzzing, um, and hopefully we keep entertaining you. So uh, keep it up. And that is it. Number 100 in the bag. It's crazy. All wrapped up. Now, as always guys, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep supporting and keep up with the channel. And I'm actually gonna throw you to the video you did at the weekend for the oh, Stan's the one. race against mm. Ollie Beckinsale. Yeah, that was good. I quite enjoyed it. It was good yeah. fun. A bit different for me to do something like that. Yeah, super cool. It was stressful. It, it was actually <laughs> stressful, yeah. And I really appreciated your help there. Oh, my uh, pleasure. Okay. But uh, even though um, you're on the winning team, <laughs> which is a bit of a shame. Um, if you want to have a laugh at the first ever GMBN Tech Show, in fact, not even a laugh, I hope it was good. Um, it must be good because some of you are still watching it. Um, <laughs> click down here. Um, please give us a love. Let us know what you think of the show. Um, more importantly, we're going to have a bit of a show re or refresh after Christmas. So let us know what you'd love to see on a GMBN Tech Show, and uh, hopefully we'll make your dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs>